Assalamu alaikum and very good day. So for today's class will be the week 2, the design process. So for the outline for this week will be the engineering design. So what is engineering design really? So engineering design requires design process and phases of design. So of course you have to read it with the materials in the design process and then you have to know about the technical system in the design and then from function to form so the one, this one is for the designing product and uh, assembly and so on uh. and then product realization and as well as the redevelopment process and then some of the summary for the engineering design next which is the design versus ambiguity Ambiguity means blur, not actually confirm this one is actual actual solution for any kind of problem. So design, which is a valid or acceptable solution to an open-ended problem. So any kind of product, which is an is an open-ended problem. So there's no specific design or foolproof or hundred percent accurate design. So design, for example, a design designing a cell phone that upsells all others so people are the oh, consumers they are they they have their own mind they have their own specification they have their own uh, desire for what kind of phone that that they want to buy so all design channels are ambiguous uh, actually blur okay unlike answer to mathematical expression there are always several right and answer to any design and challenge. So the, the answer is always uncertain or ambiguous. So not all design solutions are equal good. However, some are definitely wrong. Of course, there are the worst design, of course. Huh? For example, you have a handphone and then you have to go for the slight motion so that you can type and so on. That kind of phone is like 10 years ago, probably easy to break down and so on. Huh? So, there are well-defined versus open-ended. So design problem have no correct solution. There has no actual or accurate solution. You have only successful or unsuccessful solution. So okay or not okay, that's all. Okay, and then you have to compare to skill development practice problem. Of course, according to textbook, you have you can. Uh, well define your skill okay and then you have the complete correct listed and unique okay of course you have the correct answer this one is in textbook for example in the uh, static and strength of material of course you have an exact accurate answer for each problem and so on and then there's not required money and then you may know when you are right the answer so your requires for the very specific knowledge so this one is textbook type of knowledge of problem solving okay so for producing a product this one is an open-ended any kind or anything okay can be the solution so it is a very poorly defined poorly defined means you don't have any actual this uh, requirement actually for example if i have you what do you want to eat today especially for girls uh, if you are uh, you ask your girlfriend what do you want to eat probably they will ask you, uh, they will answer you uh, any kind anything is okay and then when you decide something and then suddenly she said eh, i don't like this one probably no okay and then of course there is no unique solution so depend on the approach uh. and then you have course schedule which is this these critical factors uh, that you have to uh, to to uh, to cons uh, actually to relate with the design actually itself, and then you have done point very hard to identify. Actually, the milestone uh, okay, you have done this and, and so on and so on, but actually you don't actually have uh, you don't you cannot actually point anything uh, okay, and then. The uh, need multi, you need multidisciplinary knowledge. Okay, multidisciplinary knowledge means if you design something, probably you need to have a manpower or 
several kind of experts. For example, expert in materials, expert in mechanical, electrical, expert in design, aesthetic, and so on. Expert in uh, purchasing, expert in uh, selling the product, and so on. That kind of thing is very, I think, uh, personally, I think this is very important uh, for designing. Before you start something, sell something, you need to actually do some background study and so on. That kind of thing requires very expert. And then this one is analysis versus synthesis. So analysis is to know what is, what is is, what is this thing, and what is occur, okay, what occurs, what happening, and then try to explain it. For example, a separating or breaking up of a whole into its parts with an examination of these parts to reveal their nature, proportion, function, interrelationships, and many more. And then synthesis is know what is needed and then try to create it, which is design. And then try to putting together of the parts and elements so as to form as a whole. So example for the mechanical engineer design, first you need to have analysis. Of course, mechanical, you have to use force, moment, flow, uh, pressure, machines, mechanism, motion, energy, and conversion. That kind of analysis is required. For example, if you want to uh, design a pressure vessel, then you need to know what kind of force that you are required to insert the fluid into the pressure vessel, what kind, what kind of pressure that required for this one, and then what kind of solution, what kind of, of the mechanism, and so on. And then for the synthesis and testing, you have to do some sketches and draw drawings. And then you have to predict the behavior. So you have to do some kind of simulation model of test. And then you can do some kind of sub-skill test which is, uh, or experiments. And then you need to do some kind of study of the materials and manufacturing. So for the realization, okay, this is, depends on the customer needs. Compare the requirements. Manufacturing cost, performance, okay, which is including analysis and testing. Okay, so next is the design versus analysis. Which of the following is design and then which one is analysis? So for A, given that the customer wishes to fasten together two steel plates, select appropriate size and material for the bolt, nut and washer. So this one is probably designing. And then for B, given the cross-section geometry of a new airplane wing, then determine the lift it produced using fleet mechanics principle. This one obviously textbook type of information. So this one is obviously analysis. So when you have drawing, then you can do analysis. For A, the customer wishes to fasten together two steel plates means that you have to imagine what kind of steel to plate and then what kind of the process and then you have to actually to consult with the customer what kind of material what kind of the cost and so on okay <clears throat> so form is the solution to a design in this case both size and materials okay so design process, design starts with the identification of a market need. Okay, market need, actually plural of needs, they have uh, many needs. So concepts, general working of principle are uh, identified to fill in the need. Okay, concept, so you have to have kind of idea. Okay, so you have a, to have to brainstorm uh, independent, depending on the what kind of the requirement. The most promising of these are developed into sketches or diagrams indicating configuration, layout and scale. So this one is embodiment. So you have to draw something actually. You have some kind of idea, for example, mechanism to remove, or for example, mechanism to remove stain on the clothes and so on. And then for the embodiment, you have to draw something. For example, in this case, if you want to remove stain on the, on the clothes, probably the mechanism will be in form of washing or you can use solution, spinning and so on, uh, solution and so on. So one or more of these selected for detailed development, analyzing performance, safety and cost. So 
you have a lot of concept, then you narrow down, you have a lot of embodiment, which is a design prototype actually. And then from this design, you select one of these designs and then you go for detail. So the output is a design enabling, uh, enabling, enabling the construction of a prototype that after testing and development goes to manufacture. So after design, go for prototype, actual prototype, okay, and then you go for testing, okay. For example, you want to make car, you do some prototype first, and then you go for 100,000 kilometer run first, whether you, uh, and then you can see whether this one is can be done or not. And then this one is the design process flow chart. So this one is quite common and very general. So this one you can do, uh, you can use it for PDM and IDP. So market need, which is producing the design requirement. So design requirement can be very vague, mean very vague, mean not so clear, or very specific, such as in the uh, construction, in the design, engineering design, and so on. So from that, you can produce some concept, so which is to determine the function of structure, seek working principle, and evaluate and select the concept. So this one is the concept, okay? Concept phase, huh? this one. And then after you selected or choose from uh, several concept, okay? Choose concept, specific concept for uh, from a very various concept. So you can go for the embodiment. So from here, you need to develop the layout, scale form, and model analyze, and so on. Uh. So this one is quite detailed, uh. okay? Not actually detailed, but you have to have a very sketch and so on. Uh. And then you go for detailing after you choose the, the, the kind of design that you are preferring or uh, the design that you are deciding to approve. Uh. So this one you have to do analyzing in detailing phase you have to do analyze components. So analyze components means that you have to break down all the component in from the product into a several type of component and then you have to break down sub assembly and so on. So you have to optimize the performance and cost. So each of the components okay probably have several materials because it depends on the function of the components and then you can Finally, after that, you can use the final choice of material and process after you do some of the uh, ranking and screening studies uh, for the material. And then, uh, lastly, you can go for the product specification. So, material design in proce design process. Okay, firstly, in the design requirement, okay, you give some design requirement or uh, an idea or, or market needs. And then, in the concept stage, here, any kind of material are available as a candidate. Okay, any kind of material, concept, just concept. Okay, and then, okay, don't take this word as it is. A, okay, fluid means any kind of movement. So, it's actually any kind of material can be jumbled up. Okay, can be used as a, uh, a, can, as a candidate. And then, as the design gels and the requirement becomes sharper, this one in, in form of much more, more narrower, okay, narrower uh, viewer, because if you have the design requirement, so you can narrow down into a specific material, less, uh, less specific, uh, I think less specific, but much more specific compared to this one. Uh. So this one is the narrower viewer for which material that can be used, okay. So the, inf the information probably you need to decide, for example, uh, you want to make a bicycle, so probably based on the design requirement, this bicycle need to be a medium cost but lightweight. So probably the material will be in the range from steel to aluminium and so on. Not going to the composite, not going for to the wood and so on. So in the final stage, detail, okay, stage when finite element optimization and other analysis are undertaken. The need is for data for just one or very few materials at the highest precision. So you have to do some screening and ranking to narrow down all the materials. Okay, so that so that you can uh, lead to the single final choice of material. Okay. 
So as for the materials in the design process, it start with the market needs and then you go for the problem statement, which is the design requirements. Huh? And then from the design requirement, you can go for the concept stage, which is in relation with the materials. Okay, remember the, the term fluid, which is all materials are candidates for this problem. So the data for the material family, family, you can go for metals, ceramics, polymer and composites. And then after you go, after you done with the concept, go for the embodiment. And then you start to narrow down all, all the material. In this case, you can select either from the steel family or aluminum family or nickel alloy family. For example, in this case, they choose metal from the metal family metal universe and then after you choose the best embodiment which is the best uh, best design and then you go for the detailing for example in this case if you want to use make it and uh, uh, make an, a bicycle made from aluminium so you have to specify what kind of aluminium that you want to use for example aluminium 2000 series 6000 series and 7000 series then after you choose that material from the screening ranking and so on then you go for the product specification okay continue from the previous slide okay this one is the relationship between materials in other hand another one is the design tool that you can use for material selection and in design process so over here for the material selection for the concept part so as you know that all material can be a candidate which is having a low precision and detail Okay, you start choosing, uh, is it made from wood or is it from, from metal? So you can use several design tools over here to decide what kind of uh, material that we want to use. So this one, you can use function modeling, visible studies and so on. Uh. And then as you go to the embodiment, okay, you take for the subset of the material. So for example, from the material universe, you choose metal. Okay. So this one have a higher precision, slightly higher compared to the concept phase. And then over here, you can relate with the approximate analysis, okay, geometric modeling, simulation method, and method selector. Okay. So this one is part of the embodiment. And then when, when you go to the detail phase, so you need to choose one kind of material. So of course, over here, you need to relate with the Cost modeling, component modeling, finite element analysis, okay, modeling, uh, DFM, DFA, and so on. Uh. Then after that, you can go for the product specification. Here's some example for the need concept embodiment phase. So for example, this figure over here is a bottle with a cork. So you need to remove this cork to get the liquid into these glasses okay so this one is the need okay customer need or the design requirement and then you go for the concept what kind of mechanism that you can use to remove the cork from the bottle either you can use a part of drill part of here or you can use sideways or you can use injection so that you can extract the solution from the bottle without removing the cork as on that kind of thing is called concept and then from these three concepts you choose one concept and then you go for the embodiment so for the embodiment you go through the slightly much more detailed design for example what kind of uh, motion that you are required to remove the cork using this kind of screw so either you use direct pull okay you you screw this uh, rail over here and then you pull it manually by your hand and then over here you can use a lever mechanism so you can remove this one this cork without using a much force huh? then after that you have a several kind of embodiment huh? either you can use gear pull or you can use a spinning mechanism and so on huh? So over here, you might choose the best kind of the embodiment, actually the best kind of prototype you want to produce. So 
over here is very common over here is less common is this one is slightly complicated design over here okay so consequently you can choose the labeled pull mechanism because it's quite cheap and also easy to be used okay here we show the detailed design stage for the lever and grip of the corkscrew design bring in the red of the previous frame so over here is the label and the grip so you go for the detailed design which is the first one is the grip so you need to have a sufficient friction so you need to use cast phenolic to the color okay and then as for the lever okay you can use stainless steel okay so this kind of thing you need to put into the detailed design so as for the technical system in design so the product itself is called a technical system so you have a several sub assembly in order for you to produce a complex design of complex product you have to have a various function and also various assembly so if you have a sub assembly very sub assembly so you have a different component so you have to Job done all the components are required for example if you want to make an aeroplane so all these components inside the aeroplane they have a thousand kind of a component for example if you want to make the component for the fuselage you take from Malaysia if you want to make the engine part you take from the Rolls Royce and so on so here is some example okay for producing a drill okay hand drill so you have a several sub assembly for example the drill part the the, the drill component drill holding component and then the battery part and then the uh, the machine part okay the, the the motor part and so on so that kind of thing you have a various sub assembly and various components that you can use to produce this hand drill there is the function structure the function structure is a system approach to the analysis of a technical system seen as transformation of energy, materials and information which is signal. And then from this approach, when elaborated, have the help structures thinking about the alternative design. So from the input, you have a various function in the technical system, we call it subsystem. And then the output, which is the in form of energy, materials, and also information, which is a either signal and so on. Eh? Next, form follows function. So function directs form. So form is the in form of shape, design, configuration, weight, human interface, experience, materials of construction, and many more. So design connects from form which is the output to the desired function which is the input through a decision making process so in the technical system which is the decision making process so function from graphically okay so the function is to control for example any kind of uh, properties for example to control hold move protect heat cool store amplify and so on and then from function you go to design so here in design you have to use the design okay so you use the decision making process and then from the decision making process you choose the best design and then you choose to form it which, which is actually to realize the, the the design itself so here is the shape configuration size materials manufacturer process and many more so you from the decision making process you can decide this kind of information over here what kind of shape configuration the size type of material that can be used and then what kind of materials processing okay so here is the function material shape process interaction okay the selection of material is tied in with process and shape okay of course from the function is decided from the design equipment 
and then from that you have a several design and then you can choose the right material and shape and so on so over here the matrix itself is subjected to processing which is for example uh, forging welding and many more that collective are called manufacture okay function material and shape and process are interacting with each other so if you change the function you can change you need to change the material and shape and process if you change the process of course you need to change the shape uh, material and sometimes you can change the function directly so function influence the material choice obviously okay and then from the material choice influence the process through the material's ability to be processed so if you choose aluminium okay aluminium have different kind of welding compared to steel if you use stainless steel then you need to use the ig welding okay to weld the material so that kind of thing that kind of material changes the process itself so the more sophisticated the design the tighter the specification and the greater the interaction so if you have a very specific function and then very specific design so the material and shape and process is very likely having a greater interaction with each other which is other eh? engineering design as decision making so for the design definition the short version which is the set of decision making process and activities to determine the form of an object given the customer desired function for the longer definition the process of devising a system component or process to meet the desired needs it is a decision making process often interactive in which basic science mathematics and the engineering science are applied to optimally convert resources to meet a stated objective so this one is the definition for the design okay right now from the decision making to the design process first you have to formulating the problem and then you have to generate the alternatives various alternative alternatives then from the various alternatives you have to analyze it sometimes you have to redesign back and then after you choose the alternatives you have to evaluate okay the specific one okay first you have to establish the functional requirements determine the constraints and then set the performance goal so this one is called the design specifications and then as for the generating the alternative okay so you need to have a shape configuration size material type of material that you want to use and power source and many more so based on the all alternative you choose one then you need to use do some evaluating and uh, analyzing and then from this uh, chosen alternative you have to use various tools to evaluate the alternatives so from this one from the best alternative yet that you have choose you need to go for the manufacturing specification so manufacturing specification came from all this flow here is the phases of engineering design first how do design decision change over time another one is there a logical grouping of decisions and then illustrate with an example for example here you have to design a brake for stopping a spinning shaft so the requirement for the brake which is the 8 inches diameter horizontal shaft and then made from uh, the horizontal shaft is made from the uh, nickel chrome moly alloy steel so nickel chrome moly alloy steel which is the uh, high wear resistant and high temperature material and then the weight of the shaft is 1000 pound and then the rotation speed which is the maximum which is 3600 rpm so this is the requirement for the brake to operate so obviously the brake is form of the brake this material is the nickel chrome moly alloy and then the weight that that the the this have to 
to to be burdened or to be connected with which is the 1000 pound of sharp weight and then the rotational speed maximum for the uh, both sharp and also the this will be 3600 rpm so this is the requirement design here is the formulation phase for the brake design early in the design process we decide on the nature of the functional requirement and the inputs for the design for the brake. So, first you need to decide upon a satisfactory rate of deceleration. For example, you need to brake, for example, from 100 km per hour in 30 meters or 100 meters rate of deceleration. And then determine the length of the shaft. So, the length of the shaft which is having a weight of 1,000 pounds and then to be mounted or to be attached with the brake disc. So you need to determine the length of shaft so that you can calculate the moment, the torque, okay, the torsion, the shear stress and so on. And then you need to determine where it is supported. So obviously this one, the brake is to be mounted or to be attached also with the wheel and also to be attached with the drive shaft and also to be attached to the suspension system and then you need to determine what kind of actuating energy is available for example accelerating from the engine decelerating from the braking mechanism another one is to decide to learn from existing similar product actually when you are producing something is already made up there so you have to compare side by side or you have to uh, you have to learn it you have to study it from the existing products for example if you want to make a car then you compare you study of an other car for example Proton want to make a car and then you, you study the Nissan Toyota and so on okay for example, if you want to make bicycle, compare side by side with other bicycle. And then, choose to research brakes in the library. This one for the high-ended mechanism. For example, magnetic braking, air braking, and traditional braking. So, as for the concept design phase for the brake design, decide physical principle that will perform the braking function. Here, the braking mechanism, whether you want to use surface friction, where you have to use drum brake, okay, disc or caliper, or you have to use opposing magnetic field. So, of course, nickel chrome moly also can be in form of magnetic material. So, you can use a strong magnet to decelerate. So, you, can, you need to use inverse motor to produce a magnetic field. Probably this one is used in uh, Ferrari and so on. And then you need, uh, you can use some kind of air friction mechanism, fan blade, uh, pressure pump and so on. So the, that kind of thing for the braking function or braking mechanism. Assuming that we decide on surface friction because surface, surface friction is very easy to reproduce, okay, and also it's very economical, it's very cheap compared to magnetic field and friction. So from the configuration design phase, okay, decide upon the product components and how they are arranged and configured, which is product configuration, which is the disc caliper, where to be put, drum, handbrake, band brake, sorry, and location of the shaft, whether it to be on the left or right or in the middle. So that kind of thing, you need to go for it. Uh, you need to decide in the configuration design phase. So assuming we decide on a disc caliper brake, this one is quite common for the commercial or the private uh, vehicle. For the private. So you need to decide upon part features and how they are arranged and configured. So you can see in this figure parts of the shaft and also braking disc and so on. So part configuration in relate with the size of the hub to this and relative size of rotor thickness 
2 diameter and then another one is the parametric design phase so you need to decide upon specific values for the design variables and parameter for example the rotor diameter of the rotor diameter rotor thickness brake pad area pad material and hydraulic pressure on piston so hydraulic pressure and piston is for for the braking pad to be pushed against the braking disc a break this pad material usually uh, we use ceramics uh, coated on top of a metal brake pad area which is this area rotor thickness and rotor diameter so you have to decide the diameter okay so the smaller the diameter okay probably you need to have a greater force to to stop this rotor for moving moving eh? in the detailed design phases previously you have a uh, this without holes for example and then here you have holes over here okay so you need design upon the remaining manufacturing specification okay machine rotor tolerance so in order for you to to uh, to do to, to process the material to form in this kind of product so you need to decide what kind of tolerance that you expect for example if you go for the high spec or advanced motor probably you should use a very low tolerance huh? if you use for the commercial vehicle and so on probably you have a bigger margin huh? And then pad bonding, racing cure time and temperature. This one is for the padding material. So this one is for the whole another process for the padding material. And then the assembly procedure. After you gather all the components and then you need to go for the assembly procedure. So this procedure can be optimized using various kind of uh, manufacturing tools. Huh? And then you need to go for the testing procedure. So testing procedure, for example, braking mechanism, and then you go for the long, uh, for example, cyclic test, and then you go for the temperature test. For example, you need to determine whether the temperature of the material during braking is increasing significantly, okay, or not. So this function of the hole over here, which is providing the airflow to reducing the heat amassing in the disc so in, if you increase the temperature of the disc and then the mechanical property will be significantly reduced for example the hardness or the toughness the fatigue strength the tensile strength will be affected by the temperature so they put the whole design over here to reduce the temperature of the braking of uh, break disc during the braking and then the final form is the design solution so the function is to stop a spinning shaft okay to stop the spinning shaft so in form of rotor 10 inch diameter made from cast iron okay made from a 3 over 8 inch thick cooling passage forged from 4140 steel caliper housing and then for the braking pads, two opposing, okay, four square inch metal particles in the epoxy matrix. So the braking pad made, made from the epoxy mixed with the uh, metal particles. And then stainless steel 304 piston with 1.25 inch diameter with elastometric, elastometric, eh, elastometric seal. And then 105 pressure square inch hydraulic piston okay hydraulic pressure, uh, piston pressure here's some selection strategy example for example in case for this one is cars so the requirements to buy a car is it can be expressed as constraint and objective so the constraint will be the mid-size family saloon okay four doors 200 horsepower and then the objective is for you to choose the lesser cost 
of the ownership of the car. So from that, you need to have uh, some kind of data, a lot of data actually. So what is the performance, economy, what car, rating, and so on. So probably you can search into the carbase.com and uh, .my, for example, you, have, you, you need to uh, compare side by side within the dimension of the car, make and model, and then for example, the, this car is already five years model, probably next year will be having a facelift, and then you have a uh, fuel type. Okay, for example, either you, you want to use diesel, you want to use uh, petrol, or you can use hybrid or purely electric car. And then how about the power in comparison? For example, probably you don't have to use 200 horsepower, probably you want to use 150 or 120 horsepower for a normal economical car. And then how about the fuel consumption? For example, 20 km per liter of fuel that you want to use to move. And then carbon dioxide emission rating. So this one carbon dioxide emission rating is very strict in the Euro, European, eh? obviously. For Malaysia, uh, probably doesn't concern much, but we have the standard for the carbon uh, emission. But Singapore is quite strict. Eh? Okay, they probably they prefer to use Euro 5 cars and so on. So from these requirements and data, you can compare with each other, which is comparison of the engine or the body of the car. So you can do the screening, ranking and documentation. So screening, you have a, a lot of cars to, as a candidate and then ranking, you jot down which one has the highest performance. For example, car A having a high performance engine, okay, high power torque, but the fuel consumption is very low so for the for the torque for the power will be 200 horsepower which is you can rate it at rate it as uh, 10 for example but the fuel consumption you can rate as 5 because you have consumed a lot of uh, fuel for this 200 horsepower engine so after you do some screening and ranking based on the ranking numbers ranking numbers means that the the higher the rank mark the the that is the best choice then for the car. Then after you do the ranking, so that you can have the, for example, top three selection of the car. So you go for the documentation. So documentation means that all the details, for example, uh, the model type and so on. Uh. Okay. So documentation, which is including delivery time, service frequency, nearest delay and warranty. That one is quite common. Eh? But actual documentation, which is uh, you go for the brochure and then you have all the details. That kind of thing is called documentation. Okay. In this slide, it's another example for the selection strategy for materials for making either this one or this one. Okay. So, assuming that this one is for choosing bicycle. So as for the design requirements, you need to find out the constraints and the objective. Okay, constraints and the objective. So as for the constraint of the materials to be used to produce product, which is able to be mold, water and UV resistance, stiff enough and strong enough. So probably you need to have a little much more detail about the stiff enough, which is the stiffness in value and strong enough, probably tensile strength or uh, shear strength and so on and then the objective of this product need to be as light as possible and cheap as possible okay so over here you, you are required to have a various data which is the material attributes here in fkp you have a ces edu pack in the material selection lab so you have a various uh, tens of thousands of material that you can choose so you can see the material attributes all the requirement over here able to be molded water UV resistant also have in here okay of course you can google it and then you can go for the mac web website and so on process attribute for example if you choose aluminium what kind of molding process that you can use uh, if you use stainless steel what kind of joining process you can use and so on so after that you can go for the documentation 
for the detailed documentation for the meter itself, for example, density, price per kilogram, modulus, young modulus, shear modulus, and so on, durability, process compatibility, and many more. Then for the comparison engine, comparison, not engine, eh, it's actually comparison, you do the screening, ranking, and documentation. Okay, then go for the final selection. So the design phase summary, which is the problem formulation, concept design, configuration design, and parametric design. Okay, so this one, it, from here to here, is called preliminary, preliminary design, tongue twisting preliminary design. And then, so that you can get the detailed design. As for your tutorials, imagine yourself as a designer for a product innovation. You are required to design an exoskeleton for prolonged standing applications such as prolonged standing working operator, prolonged standing in public transportation, and many more. So the exoskeleton must be lightweight, easy to wear, and can withstand loading up to 150 kg. Lightweight means, for example, if you want to carry this exoskeleton, it's more likely to be like 2 to 5 kg. Maximum 5 kg. 5 kg is like buying rice. Okay, 5 kg rice. It's quite heavy. 2 kg is like handling a book. Okay, not too heavy. Eh? So, the loading will be 150 kg. So, you need to sustain the weight 150 kg. Okay, and then using the design process flow chart. Okay, previous slide, eh? you have uh, to refer that kind of chart. Design the best design for the exoskeleton. So for the step for the designing process, which is you need to state the design requirement based on the statement over here. And then also you need to state the concept, idea. Okay, at least you need to have three or you can draw. Okay, concept at least three. And then from those concepts, you choose one concept and then draw the embodiment. So as for the embodiment, at least you need to have three, yeah? three kind of design. So from that, you choose one. And then from this, from this embodiment, so you need to choose best design and give the details. So you can refer to the, uh, the mechanism for removing cork from a bottle. Okay. And then. After you finish these steps, then you can write it, uh, write it in the in the one page. Then you can send send it to the forum. Okay, of course you can use uh, Word lah, Microsoft Word or Microsoft uh, PowerPoint and so on lah. You can use either of that one. Okay.